Hello, Internet. So, a few things happened. I'll catch you up to speed. I had my paracentesis on Friday. Um, it was pretty standard. I did take a Uber to and from, um, which was a little expensive, but uh, I finally decided that I should probably stop taking that risk in driving myself. I did talk a little bit about it with some of the people there, and they acknowledged that more than likely nothing would ever happen, uh, but it's just a precaution that they would rather I take. So I did. They actually took a record amount of 2.7 liters of fluid out of me. Uh, that is far more than they have ever done before. I think the most before that was 2.4. So this was, it was a lot of fluid. I was very bloated and it was, it was getting to the point where it was starting to be really uncomfortable. Uh, I think that if I had waited another week, it would have started to become painful. So um, I'm glad they were able to, to get me in as soon as they were. I didn't try to take video uh, during the procedure. I think I'm just gonna give that up as a lost cause. Um, somebody pointed out in the comments of one of my previous videos that it's probably a HIPAA violation and that's why they don't allow it. So I think I'm just gonna stop asking. Uh, it's it's not that important. Uh, I guess I just kind of wanted to show people, you know, the 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 tube going into me and the bucket of fluid that they pump out of me. But it doesn't matter. What I did end up doing is I took video of myself both before and after to show you the difference. Now I wasn't going to do this. I didn't want to show anybody my belly. Uh, honestly. I'm just embarrassed. I'm very body shy by nature. And like, I don't even wear shorts when it's hot out because I'm just embarrassed. And the the bloating was just sort of an additional layer of, of uh, awkward embarrassment on top of that. But uh, ultimately I decided that if I'm gonna show people what it's like, then I should probably be showing people every aspect of it as much as I can. So I want people to see this uh, and I, I, I just kind of have to get over my body shyness in order to do this. So, so I'm going to splice that video in here. Okay, so here we go. Um, so there's my belly. And I'm not pushing this out in any way. This is me sucking it in. Yeah, this is me letting it go. So you can see how it's um, obviously distended. Here's the front view. And, you, and there's my surgery scar from when they did the double resection. Uh, so yeah, that's what it looks like. That was the before, and so now here's the after. Okay, and now we've got the after. Ta-da! This is me sucking it in. This is me letting it go. This is the front view. So you can see a lot of that bloating is gone. All that's left is my embarrassing middle-aged flab. So, there you go. And so, as you can see, uh, a remarkable difference in size. And so, hopefully, now people can can kind of get an idea of what that's like for me, where um, it's just a steady growth of, of fluid over time, and then it becomes really uncomfortable, and then they have to drain it out, and then I feel much better. And I always feel a lot better once they get it out of me. I was uh, I was in by nine uh, nine a.m. Uh, arrival time, and then I was out by two o'clock. So not as long as last time, thank God. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just sort of um, it's pretty standard. In other news, I spoke with the uh, maintenance guy for the building. Uh, he came in and measured uh, for uh, replacing my carpeting. As he was doing this, we discussed options. Uh, I mentioned, I think, in a previous video about laminate flooring. Now, he he did say that um, he didn't think that he would be able to get uh, carpeting that matched what I already have, and so it would look really weird. Uh, so the idea of doing laminate flooring was much more appealing. Uh, it's also much cheaper than carpeting. I think it's something like a dollar a square foot or a dollar a a dollar a tile or something like that and he showed me a picture of another floor he had done and it looks great i had long ago when i first moved into the building i had thought about getting the interlocking uh pieces uh to just lay down over the carpeting because you can do that you can just put it down over the carpeting you don't have to rip up carpeting to, to put it down he said the interlocking type they're good but um but the way that they they fit together they lock this way but they 
since they're not glued or screwed together, they, they slide and you can wind up with gaps. Uh, the way that he's going to do it, this is actually stuff that the joints glue together uh, and, um, and they glue to the floor. So I, I won't have to worry about that. And then we were looking at the living room and how um, the other guy, when he cut the carpeting out, he had to cut into the living room a bit. And he's like, well, I can, I can put the laminate flooring in here, but it, it's gonna look weird because it's this odd shape that juts into the living room. So why don't I just do your whole living room? So, ironically, I'm going to get the, uh, the wood flooring that I always wanted. So I'm, I'm not happy this happened, but I am very happy with the outcome. He said that he would uh, get an estimate. He would talk with the property manager. He guaranteed me that the property manager was going to say yes. Um, I haven't got back in touch with him. I think I'll probably try to do that today and see what we can, um, see what we can schedule for the future. Uh, it should be soon-ish. Uh, the only issue is that I'm going to have to figure out what to do with all of my living room furniture. Uh, some of it can be moved into the um, the basement of the building uh, temporarily and then come back out when he's done. Uh, other stuff, the bigger stuff, I'm just going to have to like move to one side of the room while he works on one side and, and then move it back when he works on the other. Um, he said it, it should only take him one day uh, of work, uh, but I, I'm trying to make sure that I plan accordingly so that, you know, uh, we can do this on my days off and maybe if necessary, like if he has to do it an extra day, cause I want to be here for all of that. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's good. I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to look good and I'm going to feel good about it. So I look forward to that. Aside from that, uh, you may notice that this video did not have any advertisements on it. Uh, I intentionally did not put any ads on it. I've run into a snag with that. So when you partner with YouTube for uh, advertisements on your videos, when you monetize your channel, you have to sign up for something called Google AdSense. And it's an account where you get your money put into. And then I think you actually get a check in the mail because they, they wanted me to verify my, my home address. When I first made the account, it didn't look like it went through. Um, there was, I forget what it was, but it was just like, it, it didn't seem like it, 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 uh, that my request for an account happened. So I did it again and I wound up with two accounts. Now, when I tried to log into the first account, it tells me I need to shut down the second account in order to get that to, to work. But when I try to shut down the second account, it won't let me. It gives me an error message. And I have no idea what to do. I looked at tutorials online. I tried contacting their customer service. Rather frustratingly, they don't have an email or a phone number to call. There's sort of an automated um, word recognition program where you put in, you type in 100 characters or less, which is not enough to explain our problem. Uh, and they give you uh, uh, links to possible answers. And I went through that a few times and I just was not finding anything that looked like what I needed to know. So finally I just gave up. And it seems likely that I will not be able to continue to monetize my channel, at least not until this gets sorted out. I'm not sure how I would, because like I said, I can't contact them directly. And it's really kind of frustrating because what kind of a business model is that? Like. I can't contact the people I'm in business with. It's weird. The thought occurred to me that I could try deleting the first account to see if it shifts over to the second account, but I don't think I can since I can't log into that one. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. If anybody knows how this works, please, please, please let me know. Like if, if, if you think that you know an answer to, to how I can solve this problem, by all means, put it in the comments. But for now, I'm not going to be able to continue to uh, monetize my channel, which is frustrating. I did not like the idea of doing a GoFundMe because that's a charity and putting ads on my channel feels more like, like I'd be making this channel a second job and I would be earning that money through the ad revenue and money's not coming out of your pockets. Uh, and so it, it just, it felt like, you know, more of a business arrangement. And I, you know, I, I liked the idea that it would be money I earn. With a GoFundMe, I'm just begging for money, and that doesn't really sit right with me. 
but so many people have come out voicing their their uh, eagerness to do so that I've gone ahead and decided that that, that is what I'm going to do. So I don't know if many of you will recall, but back when I first started the channel and I was undergoing chemotherapy, I did start up a very small GoFundMe just to cover the costs of the chemotherapy visits. That didn't include the nurse visits at home. That didn't include uh, anything else. It was just those uh, sessions, those treatments, uh, which the amount that I came up with was $1,000. I actually met that goal in three days and I was really surprised. I was absolutely blown away by that. And if you did donate to that, thank you, thank you, thank you. I did start up another GoFundMe, um, and I set the amount even higher. Uh, I think something like $30,000. I obviously did not expect that I was ever going to get that. Um, and, and I didn't even come close. I, I think the most it ever um, accrued was something around like three, dollars $400. So what I've done is I've shut that one down. I've started up a new one. Now, again... I put the amount on this new one very high. I did that not because I expect to get that amount of money. I really don't. I did that so that it's so that it has enough room in it to uh, to accept the amount of you know whatever amount of donations I get. Uh, this would be, you know, if I put it at a thousand dollars and it and it, it hit that limit, you can't donate anymore. So I just want to make sure that there's enough room in there uh, for for everyone who, who wants to donate. I really, really, really do not expect this amount of money. So when you see that amount of money, don't think I'm trying to be greedy. I'm just trying to make sure there's room. It feels a little weird to do it this way, uh, to just put my hand out and say, please, if there was any other way, I would do that. And one of the things that appealed to me about the um, monetization was that it would be steady income, that it would be something regular. Every time somebody watches one of my videos, every time they see uh, uh, an advertisement, I'm getting a little bit of that money, and that continues on to the next video and the next and the next and the next. With a GoFundMe, it's kind of a one and done thing. Like I imagine people will donate once and then that's it. So I'm not continuing to get paid like I would with, you know, monetized channel. So it, it just, yeah, that's another reason why I, I didn't want to do it this way. But until something happens with Google AdSense, I can't, I, I'm not seeing any of the money that I would get from, from advertisements. That's why I took the advertisements off. That being uh, said, the link is in the description. If you want to donate, please do. If you don't, that's totally fine. If you're going to give, give whatever amount you feel comfortable with. Don't feel pressured. It's literally just to help me pay some bills. Uh, I, I've been missing work. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, being able to, to afford to live, uh, to, to, you know, pay my rent and utilities and so on. Um, so that's, that's all this is. And, and I, I greatly appreciate anyone who, who chooses to help me out in this way seriously uh, in advance thank you so uh as i have been doing i'm going to be reading some comments from uh, my previous video uh, i'm picking these out at random i did see a lot of uh happy birthday wishes thank you all for that uh much appreciated but uh yeah i'm just going to scroll through and whatever grab grabs my eye mary j bringold says i just have to comment on your hair i never had thick hair but it's just another thing that never bounced back after chemo it is dull and matted, sigh. I so love watching your flowing colors. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, my, my hair's always been actually very fine. Um, like, it looks like there's body to it, but it's actually really thin. Um, and yeah, I do really like the coloring. Uh, it, the, the lighting here really picks it up. So I'm very happy with it. I'm going to do it again soon because I really enjoyed how this turned out. And uh, it's already starting to fade out, as you can see, towards the, the ends. So I, I want to, I definitely want to do that again. Uh, Suki Johnson says, happy birthday, Daniel. Thank you. I was wondering, could you go on SS disability? I'm assuming that's social security. Um, so that you had some money coming in and didn't have to worry about work on the days you're not feeling up to it. Hugs to you. Butterfly emoji, rainbow emoji, purple heart emoji. <laughs> Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, I did. Uh, I did mention in a previous video. Um, I was given the option through work to go on disability, uh, both short term and long term. If I do that, then I'm not allowed to work, and I don't like that arrangement. If I didn't work, I would just sit around at home all day doing nothing, and I would go insane. I, I need to work, and, and and I love my job. I love working with the people that I work with, uh, helping the individuals that live at the group home. I I have to keep working just for my own sanity. So for now, since I, and, and because I just, I don't feel quite so sick enough to warrant being out of work entirely. Uh, like occasionally, yes, I do have to take a day off because I, I, I'm just, my meds wear me out. I'm just exhausted all the time and I have to get some sleep. Like, like it, it would be dangerous for me to try to drive to work. I, I, I seriously fear, uh, uh, like falling asleep at the wheel. So when I call out, that's what it, that's what that is. It's not just, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to take a day off. No, I'm so exhausted. I seriously doubt my ability to safely get to work. But that doesn't happen all the time. As a matter of fact, I worked a full week last week. So like it just it doesn't feel like it's necessarily uh, something that I that I should have to do where I'm just not working at all. I will re-explore that option if it gets to the point where I just can't work anymore. But for now, I'm going to continue to work. Uh, I'm just going to have to make sure that I, you know, plan accordingly and try to get as much rest as I possibly can. Okay, I'm going to butcher this name, so I'm just going to spell it. I-T-B-M-U-R-R-1 says, happy birthday, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, can you get a stent or line put in so that the fluid just drains out into a bag versus having to go in for a pairs and teases? I did respond to this person, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it uh, here. Uh, no, the, they, they said that it, because it's such a slow accrual, it would be pointless to do that. If they put in a drain, it would just collect a tiny little bit every day, and, um, and it would be a huge inconvenience for me. Uh, plus, it adds another uh, site that could possibly get infected and they want to reduce that as much as possible. Uh, so it's just it's just better to wait until there's enough fluid to drain and then just do a paracentesis. I have a lot of viewers from Australia and New Zealand. It's a beautiful country. I wish I, wish I could go there someday. Um, I've always wanted to go to Australia, uh, definitely New Zealand. Obviously, what with COVID, uh, does, that just wasn't in the cards recently, but who knows, maybe, maybe in the future. Just in general, I've noticed a lot of people are saying that I look healthy. Um, thank you, first of all. Um, but I think the, the thing is cancer doesn't tend to have a, a, a visual quality to it, at least not the kind that attacks your internal organs. I mean, certainly somebody with lung cancer is going to be coughing a lot, um, having breathing, breathing problems. Uh, somebody with uh, stomach cancer uh, might have digestive problems. I've got digestive problems because it was colon cancer. And even though they took it out of my colon, my colon is now held together by titanium uh, staples. And so I have digestive issues. Um, but generally speaking, when it comes to something like this, you're really not going to see it you know, on someone's face, a lot of the, what people think of as the hallmarks of, of cancer, uh, lost weight, um, going bald, that's, that's from treatments. That's from like chemotherapy and the like. Uh, the, when I was undergoing chemo, I was very sick and I looked sick and I was, you know, I was bald. I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I've gained some of that back. Uh, I've never been able to gain back as much weight as I had prior to, uh, starting chemo. Um, so I'm, I'm still very skinny, but, uh, definitely doing better, you know, with that. Yeah. Generally speaking, you're really not going to see it evident on my face until the very end. And when I say the very end, I mean, like once my liver shuts down, I'll go jaundiced. My skin will turn yellow. Uh, my eyes, the, the um, these things, little white parts of the fingernail that will turn yellow, but that'll be like days before I die, maybe a week. I don't know. But, uh, basically I, I, I expect I'll look pretty good up until the very end. Okay. So I think that's it for this one. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I was planning to talk about. I hope everyone is having a great, uh, start to their summer. Uh, I hope people are being uh, safe, but also uh, getting, you know, managing to get out and, and enjoy nice weather, uh, get back to maybe doing some, some outdoor activities that, that you like, but, you know, stay safe, mask up if you have to. Uh, I hope you've all been vaccinated and that's, that's it for now.
So until next time, take care.